Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ezra from Meta. Um, so with Yunzi today we will be talking about how we are improving our uh, conflation, road conflation uh, capabilities uh, at Meta, which is at the backbone of most of the things that we are providing, such as daylight. Um, so um, this uh, presentation talks about our new method, which cares about preserving road connectivity. Uh, so I will be talking about why we care about this problem and uh, how does uh, this proposed method based on graphs work. And you will uh, continue with uh, results and conclude the presentation. Um, so I, I think, I mean, it's obvious, like uh, when we are talking about roads, uh, what we are talking about is connecting people with these roads, connecting communities. So creating a whole, like, fully connected road network, uh, not missing, like, you know, important, uh, you know, line segments, is an important piece uh, when it comes to merging multiple data sources in mapping. Um, and these are important in many use cases, for example, in transportation uh, or accessibility and safety, like, you know, you would uh, like to know uh, the ramps, you know, on a sidewalk network, for example, or in routing and navigation, I mean, you would be comfortable, like, you know, following that navigation engine that it would lead you at a place, you know, there exists a road. Uh, that you that uh, you will make that maneuver that it's telling you, or in city planning as well. I think uh, the previous um, presentation also uh, highlighted the important importance of uh, you know planning using these road networks uh, on traffic or congestion. Uh, and recently also there are lots of various use cases with self-driving cars and others like related to AR and VR uh, using the availability of these roads. Um, and uh, in, in various uh, experiences. Um, so um, when we thought about like, you know, uh, especially showcasing the merits of such an approach, uh, we landed on a map feature, uh, a pedestrian feature, footways uh, in OSM, because uh, it's not very well mapped in OSM. And also, um, uh, uh, and it also, um, you know, uh, for different use cases, say, I mean, you are trying to create some pedestrian routing, uh, you would uh, need, need to make sure, uh, you know, the footway coverage in a certain area uh, is good. And uh, the good part is, uh, CTGIS departments provide some open source data sets. Uh, that would uh, kind of complement uh, existing OSM coverage. So throughout this presentation, you would see some, uh, you know, some kind of graphs on these, uh, on uh, some map images. So we uh, will be referring to OSM, uh, as you see in these solid uh, lines, as reference map. And uh, we will be taking some like open source data sets. In this example, you are seeing uh, the, uh, the sidewalk data from uh, Boston uh, City uh, Department. Um, and uh, the major observation we had, like, you know, going through these open source data sets, is you see in this intersection, you know, there is a different uh, style of delineation of the crosswalk and sidewalk. Like, you know, how, you know, you are either connecting the sidewalks that are kind of parallel to each other, or you are creating like, you know, extra, extra uh, line segments to uh, create the fi final connectivity. So our goal here is at the places where, you know, the OSM overlaps with these open source data sets, we would like to ensure we are not breaking the connectivity. We are making, uh, you know, the, the, the whole network, you know, preserved throughout the conflation operation. So um, when we did some literature search, I think uh, we ended up kind of bucketing all the existing algor algorithms into two. Um, uh, in, in one group, like you would see more local line-based, uh, you know, algorithms that's looking at like you know, especially um, uh, close na neighborhood for line strings and try to uh, decide whether to conflate a given road or not. Um, and this kind of algorithms does not consider the global network structure. Uh, while in the case of graph matching based algorithms, the, the, these tend to uh, like use that global road network structure and try to find some geometric features uh, to understand the mapping between reference map and the source map. 
Um, and there might be some uh, like you know, optimization metrics going on in this category. Uh, people come up with really creative uh, metrics when it comes to understanding how the two graphs can match. Uh, and uh, recently I have also seen a couple of deep learning based methods as well in this category to understand graph matching, up, uh, graph matching uh, between different sources. So uh, in our approach, we start by constructing the road network graph using OSM's nodes and ways uh, format. Uh, so luckily, I mean, when we are talking about an OSM way, if a node appears in multiple ways, then that means that node should be a graph node because it's, it's a bifurcation point. Um, and all the other lines, all the other line strings in between these graph nodes are considered graph edges in this case. And uh, the second step would be, okay, now we have the graph constructed, so how do we find the uh, correspondences between reference map and the source map? So um, I think we start with this basic idea, as I explained before, by looking at nodes and like, counting how many, in how many OSM ways that node appears. Uh, as you can see on the left side, um, uh, this is uh, the... Uh, road network we created from uh, Boston sidewalk data in, uh, in the downtown Boston area. Each color represents a different edge of the graph. One limitation that we observed by looking at, at this, uh, at the end we would have two graphs and we would like to make sure we are doing a meaningful matching between the nodes and edges of the graph. And we noticed that there might be sometimes no intermediate node between one of the map sources. And in this case, you know, as you see in the, uh, in the right panel uh, inside these blue areas, you know, we would need to, need to create those uh, intermediate nodes to make sure the, the two graphs match uh, with each other perfectly. So what we do is do some linear projections to create these nodes and continue with uh, mapping algorithms. So in order to match two graphs, we really started simple and we said, okay, we are gonna go with a nearest neighbor based algorithm for both nodes and edges uh, mm -hmm. and understand uh, like, you know, how the two, uh, the, the two map sources correspond to each other. So, uh, you know, as a result, uh, edge matching helped us to discard edges that needs to be conflated. And with the node matching, an important advantage here is to provide the, the, those connected, uh, connecting places. Like, you know, when you have a new road, how do you connect it with the existing OSM network? So node matching provided us, uh, you know, that advantage here. I know this is a scary slide. I'm not going to go over details, but I just wanted to put this for the audience who would be interested in the technical details. Um, but I mean, briefly, what we do is we have the mapping between the two graph nodes and edges. And literally what we do is when there is a matching between a source edge and a reference edge, we say, this is conflated, we already had this road. And uh, when there is no matching, we still look at the endpoints and look whether they have some mapping nodes. If they do, then we operate based on whether there's an existing edge there or not and create an edge if this is a new one. So I mean, th this is the whole point of this uh, kind of complex slide, but I'm, I'm happy to like, you know, take questions offline if there are any uh, with respect to technical side. Um, now Yunzi will continue with the results part. Thanks, Ezra. Um, okay, before I get into the example results, let's take a little overview about where we apply this experiment. So by far, we apply the experiments on four cities where there are open source footway data sets. Uh, there are non-OSM data set. Uh, there are Austin, Seattle, Boston, um, and NYC. Uh, when, during the experiment, we also have our mapping team QA the, the conflated data constantly uh, and about the quality of data and how it render on the map. Uh, so we make some improvement for the conflation process because of that. And at the end, by merging the open data sets with OSM data, um, using the graph-based conflation uh, process, we are able to um, increase up to 16 times in terms of the footway coverage per cities. 
and also um, increase thousands of kilometers in length per city. So let's take a look at the example result. Um, so here are two data sets. Uh, the green one is from OSM. The purple one is from another open source footwear data set. Um, so we, apply the, we first apply the node matching methods for this data set. You can see uh, for the area that have both the green line and purple lines on the left image, and when it shows up on the right image, the conversion is, uh, returns very promising results. The location of the data is still properly placed, and the connection has also properly connected to the adjacent road. And when applying no matching, we also observe there's still some issues that cannot be resolved by just using no matching. So we apply the edge matching method. You can see that um, after the no matching conversion, um, which shows up on the image in the middle, uh, there's still some duplicates at a certain part of the footway. So we apply the edge matching, and then the result shows up on the right image. You can see the duplicate has been removed by using the edge matching method. So handling a uh, data set from different resources, uh, we notice that inconsistency, uh, inconsistencies among different data sets. Um, so like for example, the case on the left here, uh, if you're looking at the green line, the line string, they look like intersecting with each other at the corner of the block. But in fact, they're not. There's no intersecting nodes um, at that intersection point. And for the cases on the right here, um, it's different. So instead of looks like intersecting with each other, instead they are not connecting with each other. They, the, the edge does not connect at a corner at the, at the, of the city block. So what we have done is um, we, we apply mul multiple steps. Like for the cases on the left here, we create the intersection nodes um, and then trim out the small edges. And the result will be show at the purple lines here. And for the case on the right, we extend the line strings and create the intersection nodes, and then we trim out the extra small edges. Um, so with the standardizing, with the pre-processing to standardize the outputs, we find out it makes the conversion process way more efficient. So the, the first row showing the raw image and um, and then we standardize the input data, and then we put the conversion, uh, part of the conversion process. And um, so the second row shows the um, shows the, uh, the shows the uh, pre-processing data before we apply any conversions. And but it's already looked way better. And after you apply conversions, it makes the connectivity fix and smoothness fix way more efficient. So um, by far, with the graph-based completion algorithms, we find out it's great for preserving uh, row connectivity, and we're able to develop a pre-processing step to standardize the input data. Um, of course, in the future, when we apply these experiments on more data sets, we might need to improve the pre-processing step. That's it. Thank you for listening.